No, no, no. She, he's going to see her and then come back. And then you go.
gives this bride to this groom? Her mother and I do. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everyone, please be seated. Okay, scoot, scoot that way just a little. There you go. All right, well, I have to say the bridesmaids ran down the aisle, and uh, the, the bride actually took her time. Uh, dear family and friends, I want to welcome each and every one of you to this most joyous occasion. Uh, for those of you all who do not know me, my name is Missy Maderi. I'm one of the district judges here. I was able to meet Melissa and her two sisters and Lauren a couple of years ago when I was crazy enough to attempt the P90X challenge and uh, I not only got into a little bit of better shape but I also made some new friends. So when she asked me, when Melissa asked me to officiate the wedding, um, I was quite honored to do so. So thank you. We are gathered here today to take part in the most time-honored celebration of the family, uniting Melissa, Nicole Nesmith and Marvin Smith in marriage. In the three years they have been together, their love and understanding of each other has grown and matured. Now Melissa and Marvin have come to witness, before all of us, the telling of their love for each other. They have decided to live their lives together as husband and wife, and rightly so, for marriage is an honorable institution among all mankind, and therefore is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but instead reverently and with great thought. Did you think it was your time yet? <laughs> Today we share this very important moment with Melissa and Marvin as they promise to share the future ahead, accepting whatever may lie ahead. We remind them that they are performing an act of complete faith each in each other, that the heart of their marriage will be the relationship that they create. In a world where faith often falls short of expectations, it is a tribute to love and faith that you too now join hands and hearts in perfect faith and in perfect love. Melissa and Marvin, nothing is easier than saying words and nothing is harder than living them day after day. What you promise to each other today, you must renew and redecide tomorrow and every day after. At the end of the ceremony, you will legally be husband and wife and you must make the most of each day that God has given you. Real love is something beyond the warmth and the glow, the excitement and romance of being deeply in love. It is caring as much about the welfare and happiness of your partner as you do about your own self. Real love is not total absorption in the other person. It is looking outward in the same direction, but looking outward together. Love will make the burdens of life easier because you will divide them, and it will make the joy that, that much more intense because you will share it. It will make you stronger so that you can reach out and become involved in life in ways that you have never, ever risked doing alone. I require and charge both of you as you stand in the presence of these witnesses and friends that having duly considered the promises that you are about to make, you declare before this company your pledge of faith and love to each other. And be assured that if these promises are kept, your marriage will be blessed and fulfilled. A marriage is sustained by love. And what is love? Valerie, Melissa's sister at this time, will be reading. reading 1st Corinthians. If I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. 
For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I fully know. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. She lost my spot. <laughs> That's all right. To prepare, to prepare for the wedding vows today and to make the vows a little bit more personal, I gave Melissa and Marvin an assignment. Um, they had to give to only me and not to share with each other. So this is the first time that they're going to be hearing them as well. I asked them each to write 10 adjectives um, and a story, one story that would kind of always make them smile when they think about it. Uh, Melissa had her assignment done in no time. Um, Marvin, being a guy, procrastinated, but I finally got his uh, as well. Uh, when he said, wow, is it really only a week away? Here you go. Um, and what they both wrote was, was really beautiful and very touching, and I want to share them with you. Melissa wrote that Marvin was loving, funny, compassionate, trustworthy, patient, dependable, charming, attentive, intelligent, generous, kind, hardworking, clever, and romantic, even when she least expects it. Marvin wrote that Melissa was caring, reliable, loving, joyful, family-centric, I had never heard that one before, <laughs> silly, trustworthy, loyal, affable, hard worker, and focused. He also added that she was a little cray-cray, but it was in a good way, <laughs> um, and that she was <laughs> and that which she was grumpy when she was hungry. But that, that was it, all right? So he knows what he's getting into and that made me laugh. What struck me as I was going over the adjectives was how many of them overlapped. They each think the other is loving, caring, sweet, hardworking, and loyal. And those words and character traits are the rocks that relationships are actually built on. I then looked at their stories they told that make them smile and once again they didn't follow directions very well because they gave me many, many stories that would always make them smile. But I realized that was a very good thing. Um, actually, I realized that was a great thing. It means that they have so many reasons to smile when they actually think of each other. Melissa wrote that when she first met Marvin, she knew there was something there, but that she had committed to finishing her second degree and the thought of being with a military pilot was going to throw her plans a little bit off course. But she fell in love with him and with his support and encouragement, she knew she could accomplish anything. She says that people ask her if it's hard to be a military spouse. And she says that although it is never easy being away from each other, that the love, the jokes, and the funny conversations they have with each other when he is away sustains her and gets her through the days without him. She says she has many memories with Marvin, but her favorite is just to be with him. She says Marvin has helped her grow into the woman she is today. She says he constantly just wants to make her happy. She then gave me an example about a meal she had made for him. She wrote that she wasn't the best cook, actually she said she was an awful cook, but she uh, found this recipe on Pinterest, it was a lemon chicken recipe, and uh, she cooked it for him. Needless to say, she said she couldn't even eat it herself. <laughs> However, she did look across the table and there was Marvin smiling and trying his best to enjoy it. She said, I, she said, I knew he was trying because he truly loves me and wants me to be happy. Now that being said, I hope there's some cookbooks and some wedding gifts that you all are going to have out there. Melissa finishes her letter to me by saying that the best thing she has ever done was to fall completely in love with Marlin, Marvin. She says their life together has been an adventure and she can't wait to see where the journey leads them and where it will lead them together. I then started to read Marvin's letter to me and he also gave me many, many memories. Although he started the letter by saying, I always knew Melissa was one for me. Marvin is definitely a guy's guy. He is uh, full of adventure and a love of sports. Many of his stories revolved actually around sports. 
He wrote one time that he was going to be watching, he said that he was told her that he was going to be watching basketball play, playoffs all day at his house and he thought that she would pass and not come over. But being Melissa, she showed up with beer and wings and, <laughs> and cheered on his favorite team. Another time he writes they went over to his parents' house to watch the Lakers game and that they all yelled at the TV with the same passion. He loved watching her with her dad and the relationship that they have. He then adds that Melissa loves her family more than anything and that he knew she was the one for him when she was willing to give that up and move to Abilene with him and go through two deployments in a new city without her family being there. He also writes about the time they went on a vacation to Orlando with Marvin's mom and her boyfriend Scott. He says that during the weeks leading up to the trip, Melissa bragged about being the brave sister in the family and that she always was the first to want to go on any type of roller coasters. When they got to the first roller coaster, Marvin said that Melissa said, well, my stomach kind of hurts. So Marvin said, all right, well, no problem. So then they got to the second big roller coaster and Melissa said, well, my head kind of hurts. Finally, he said that she fussed up and said that she didn't like the ones that go high and then go down really fast. Well, since that's really the definition of a roller coaster, Marvin teased her and said that she is just like her dog Brody, a little dog with a big bark. But he also says that thinking about this memory always makes him smile. He also said, Melissa is the love of my life and makes me happy every time I see her. I think she is the most beautiful woman in the world and looks her best when she wakes up in the morning and smiles. He ends by saying, I'm looking forward to spending the rest of my life with her. We'll now have a reading by Marvin's brother, Terrence. May your marriage bring all of the exquisite excitement a marriage should bring. And may life grant you also patience, tolerance, and understanding. May you always need one another, not so much to fill your emptiness as to help to know your fullness. A mountain needs a valley to be complete. A valley does not make a mountain less, but more. And the valley is more a valley because it has a mountain town to go So let it be with you and you. May you need one another, but not for weakness. May you want one another, but not out of lack. May you entice one another, but not to compel one another. May you embrace one another, but, but not to encircle one another. May you succeed in all the important ways with one another and not fail in the little graces. May you look for things to praise, often say, I love you, and take no notice of small faults. If you have quarrels that push you apart, may both of you hope to have a good sense enough to take the first step back. May you enter into a mystery which is awareness of one another's presence, no more physical than spiritual, warm and near when you are side by side, and warm and near when you are separate, when you are in separate rooms or in distant cities. Thank you. Is that mic still on? Can you all hear me? Mm -hmm. Well, you can. Oh, yeah. Can anybody else hear me? Yeah. All right. All right. Y'all ready to get married now? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Marvin, to you. Answer, I will. Marvin Smith, will you receive Melissa Nicole Nesmith as your wedded wife? Will you love and comfort her, honor and keep her, in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, keep yourself un only unto her, so long as you both shall live? I will. Melissa Nicole Nesmith, will you receive Marvin Smith as your wedded husband? Will you love and comfort him, honor and keep him, in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, keep yourself only unto him, for as long as you both shall live? I will. Marvin, repeat after me. Where there has been cold, 
Where there has been cold. You have brought warmth. You have brought warmth. Where my life was just me. Where my life was just me. You have made it us. You have made it us. Melissa, I pledge from this day forward. Melissa, I pledge from this day forward. Before those special to us here. Before those special to us here. To be your husband. To be your husband. Let us make our two lives one. Let us make our two lives one. To share the good times and hard times. To share the good times and hard times. Achievements and failures. Achievements and failures. And let us always cherish. And let us always cherish. Honor and respect one another. Honor and respect one another. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. <laughs> Melissa, repeat after me. Where there has been cold. Where there has been cold. You have brought warmth. You have brought warmth. For my life was just me. When my life was just me. You have made it us. You have made it us. Marvin, I pledge from this day forward. Marvin, I pledge from this day forward. Before those special to us here. <laughs> For us special, what? <laughs> Before those special to us here. From Before all, us. For all okay, these yeah. all these, yeah. <laughs> To be your wife. <laughs> to be your wife. Let us make our two lives one. Let us make our two lives one. To share the good times and hard times. To share the good times and hard times. Achievements and failures. Achievements and failures. And let us always cherish and let us always cherish honor and respect honor and respect one another one another till death do us part till death do us part did you get the rings these circles of precious metal are regarded as fitting symbols of the purity and perpetuity of the marriage state the circle reminds us of eternity the rings are fashioned to neither have a beginning nor an end the precious metals that compose these rings are so incorruptible that they cannot be tarnished by use or by, by time. So may your union at this time be incorruptible in its purity and more lasting than time itself. Marvin, repeat after me as you put the ring on her finger. Melissa Nicole Nesmith. Melissa Nicole Nesmith. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. And I pledge to you. And I pledge to you. My love and devotion. My love and devotion. Today and today. always. Oh, today and always. Put the ring on his mm. Marvin mm. Smith. <laughs> Marvin Smith. With this ring. With this ring. Ring. <laughs> I, I, I let's start over. Marvin Smith. Marvin Smith. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. And I pledge to you. And I pledge to you. My love and devotion. My love and devotion. Today and always. Today and always. You got it? No. Oh. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. Melissa and Marvin, we have all heard you promise to share your lives together in marriage, and we recognize and respect this covenant you have just made. It is not me that makes this marriage real, but the honesty and sincerity of what you have just said and done before your friends and relatives. By the authority of the state of Texas, and as so much as Melissa and Marvin have declared their love and devotion to each other before family and friends, and have declared this by exchanging wedding bands and wedding vows, I now pronounce you husband and wife, and you may kiss your bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Marvin Smith.